It's Saturday night. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's see who's in my green room tonight, shall we? You couldn't multitask. You couldn't sit down and whoop at the same time. There was a noticeable delay there. Uh, I'm so excited. We've got the start of one of my all-time favourite TV shows in the house from 24. None other than Jack Bauer himself, Kiefer Sutherland, ladies and gentlemen. Who doesn't love Kiefer? From the IT crowd and Moon Boy, as well as the smash hit Hollywood film Bridesmaids, the very funny, the very lovely Mr. Chris O'Dowd. Hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. Thanks for joining us. One of the best stand-ups, not only in the country, but also the world, the pride of Glasgow, it's Kevin Bridges. Kevin Bridges. And the best comedian you'll ever see. And one of our finest actresses, one of our finest exports, because she's made it massive over in the States, the beautiful Emily Mortimer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. And, to see you here again. and what great music we've got for you tonight. We've got some fabulous music. Nine times Grammy Award winning R&B superstar, Mr. John Legend himself. Yeah. Hi, hey John, looking good. <laughs> He's smooth. <laughs> so, before we get to that, a Mexican man has apparently spent 14 months adrift in a boat. Did you see this in the paper this week? They're saying this man, he appeared, he said he'd been lost at sea, adrift in a boat. He looks too good for being lost at sea for a year. I mean, unless, you know, make sure that. How big was he when he set off, if that's what he's like now? <laughs> a lot of people are questioning whether he's telling the truth. What sea was he adrift in? The KFC? <laughs> I mean, he's a big fella. Oh, thank you. David Beckham's been in the papers again this week. Don't you love seeing David Beckham? It doesn't matter what he's talking about. I love seeing him in the papers. He's, a, he's always a welcome presence. He's been talking this week about his love of Lego. All right? Now, he talked about it a couple of years ago on this show. He told me he'd made a Lego Taj Mahal, and apparently sales of that item went rocketing. This week, he said he's been working on his biggest project yet, a huge model of Tower Bridge. Okay, that's what he's building. It's got thousands of pieces. And the problem I have with Lego is you often lose the bricks. Don't you halfway through? I believe David has found the perfect place to keep them. <laughs> Can I wish all our Chinese viewers a belated Happy New Year? Kong Hui Fa Choi. And welcome everyone to the Year of the Horse. That's the new Chinese year we're in now. It's a very sacred and spiritual year, the Year of the Horse. And not as the BBC caption service called it. Look at this. The Year of the Horse. How is that okay? How is that okay? Obviously, it was a spelling mistake. At least we hope it was a spelling mistake. <laughs> BBC took it down very quickly. Lucky for us, someone put it on Twitter. All right? <laughs> if Justin Bieber sees that, he'll be on the first plane to Beijing. <laughs> Horse and whores. You do not want to get those two confused or you'll end up catching the clippity-clap. <laughs> I like that one. I'm, I'm pleased you like that too. I'm very, I'm, we're proud of that here. Yeah. Uh, we've actually checked, now we checked, because you know, each year's Chinese year, it's a new uh, animal, okay, and they, they kind of go, uh, they cycle them, and we checked which Chinese year all of our guests were born in. So Kiefer and John, both of them, year of the horse. There we are. Mm. There you go. Mm. So lucky you, this year in particular. This is our year. Yeah, it looks like it is. And Kevin, you are year of the tiger. There we go. Ooh, That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Although tigers are endangered. They don't live long, and you're a Scottish tiger, so you're really endangered, I imagine. <laughs> Chris, the year of the sheep. <laughs> Seriously, I haven't made this up. But it is, you were born year of the sheep. You were. I actually come from a county, it's called, uh, there's a lot of counties in Ireland that have different, like, nicknames, like the Banner County, the Royal County, and all this. And the actual official name of our county is the Sheep Stealers. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what purpose we're stealing them for. <laughs> don't like to think about it. <laughs> now, Emily, Emily, we looked at yours there. Year of the kitten. Kitten? Really? Well, it isn't really, no. Oh. <laughs> you, we checked, and it's year of the pig, but it didn't say quite right, so that. <laughs> and I'm year of the rat, so I can't talk. I'm year of the rat. It's time for my first guest, ladies and gentlemen. I loved him in the IT crowd. He was brilliant in Bridesmaids. He's a very funny man, Mr. Chris O'Dowd. Here he is. <laughs> Oh, 
So, seriously, didn't make it up. Year of the Sheep. Year of the Sheep. That's That's what, it feels good, you yeah. know. Yeah. I've always had a curly style to me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing, Chris? I'm intrigued by this. You know what? I'm not 100% sure. I like to call it what was clean. <laughs> <laughs> Because I've never seen what appears to be a velour tracksuit sure. top yeah. under a smart double-breasted jacket. You've seen it now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, congratulations on Moon Boy. What a great oh, series. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you. Thank you. Moon Boy. It's over on Sky One, in case you weren't aware already. Comes back, starts again a week on Monday. That's right. The That's right. Uh, uh, yeah, the 17th. It's, okay. uh, yeah, it's very exciting. I love the show, and it's, it's very funny, the new well, series. Also, you, you co-write it. That's right. Co-write it. It's kind of... Uh, about my childhood growing up um, with three sisters and whatnot. Which is a bit worrying because some of the scenes in it you see there's some, uh, it's not extreme behaviour but it's occasionally it's kind of unusual behaviour. Abusive I suppose would be the word <laughs> um, and I think that's fair. I think anybody who's, I'm the youngest of five and when that happens there is a certain amount of abuse. Uh. Like I had three older sisters and one, lovely girls, mm -hmm. strong powerful girls. <laughs> <laughs> and they would kind of, one of them would hold me down the other one would tickle me, and the other one would spit in my mouth. Wow. <laughs> I was laughing. Wow. Uh, and my relationship with women... <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't really changed. No, no. <laughs> well, now I have to pay for that stuff. Yeah, yeah, well. <laughs> well, this, is, this is your year, then. <laughs> well, OK. Uh, uh, but there are some things, so, so when we see things happening to the young fella in it, and I yeah. guess he's partially based on you, Martin is partially based on you. Very much. Uh, uh, that may be, maybe there's a seed of truth in that. Maybe that actually happened to you in real life, is that right? I, I'd say kind of like 70% of the show is stuff that kind of happened here and there. What about the makeup? What about getting uh, yeah. the makeup on? That actually yeah, happened? yeah, that's, that was a thing that used to, uh, they would do this thing, my sisters, where they would wake me up, when you're the, the youngest, generally you're kind of parented by your older siblings okay. rather than... Yeah. So I, they, one of their jobs would be to wake me up in the morning and get me to school. And I would be woken up like just like three minutes before I needed to be at school. So I didn't have time to shower or wash and whatever. And then when I got to school, people would be laughing at me. And I would realize that um, during the night they had put makeup on me. Um, <laughs> and when they were being particularly cruel, they would make it like really subtle. Just like some, <laughs> like shadow, sh shadow on the eyes and stuff, <laughs> to make it look like it was a decision that I had made. <laughs> uh, now you don't play Mark the course, he's a little boy, and you play his imaginary friend. Yeah, I play his imaginary friend, and he's kind of, uh, I guess, me growing up. Okay. And did you, when you were a kid, did you have an imaginary friend? I, I didn't really. I mean, I, I talked to myself a lot, but I just. My imagination just wasn't strong enough to facilitate an imaginary friend. To create a whole person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a brick oh. um, <laughs> in my room that I had found outside that I essentially I talked to mm -hmm. um, and just ran through the events of the day with, and his name was Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not great with okay. the imagination. Did you name him or did he speak to you first and say, hey, I'm Rick? Uh, no, I named him. It was, a, it was, sorry, I didn't think he was, it was a brick. Oh, I didn't yeah. know. Uh, I wonder whether, in your mind, whether he ran in the room and he was happy and you decided to keep him. I think, I think I probably, no, he didn't run into the, I, I, I'm going to emphasize, it was a, it was like a house brick. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'm not saying that the brick talked to me. Okay. I'm saying that I oh, talked I to essentially to a piece of oh, cement. Well, that's, that's kind of sad. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah, it's really sad. I, it's not supposed to be funny. It's okay. I want people to feel sympathy for me. Okay. Let's have a look at the camera. This is Moon Boy. Moon Boy, Sky One. Monday week, it starts again. It's a great, very funny, very serious. There's a lot of warmth, a lot of heart to it. Uh, you were, before we talk, well, like Martin, in that you were also an altar boy, weren't you? I was an altar boy, yeah. Were you tempted by the priesthood? Did you ever think that might be the life for you? Was there a vocation waiting for you there? Not at all. No, I am. Um, <laughs> I am. Um, I was an altar boy for maybe three or four years. And it's, it's like, it's nice, but it's so boring. And essentially, I got asked to leave after I, um, after I attempted to set someone on fire. <laughs> Another altar boy or another a altar boy? Another yeah, uh, like a, a, a huge part of the altar boy job is candle carrying, <laughs> and uh, and the, the the attire that altar boys wear is really dry cotton. <laughs> Quite flammable. Very flammable. Oh, okay. Like it's hard to find anything more flammable really than what an altar boy wears, uh, which I found out 
uh, by, by holding it behind a friend's back and watching him go up. Huh. <laughs> like a Roman candle. That, <laughs> that would alleviate the boredom of being an altar boy, I imagine. Yes, and alleviate the duty of being an altar yeah. boy, as and, it uh, turned out. I'm hoping he survived. No, no, he perished. No, he was fine, he was Good. fine. And okay. you know what, who needs to look at him? Okay. <laughs> no, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> Uh, okay, now you know when I think you, you appeared on most people's radar, Willie, really, was Roy in the IT crowd. Uh, I don't know how many IT crowd fans we have in here, I'm hoping quite a few. What an incredible uh, series, so good. It's kind of over now, I know you've done the last one, at least for the time being. Um, you must miss it. But uh, w when you first got that part, did you think it would catch on with you? Because it's very, it's quite niche, isn't it? I, it yeah, I guess so. I mean, uh, because Graham Linehan, who, who wrote and created the show, kind of created so many... He did, uh, you know, Black Books and Father Ted, and, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's a, an amazing writer. So I kind of knew that the show, regardless of me being in it, was going to be great. But, um, yeah, it was amazing to be part of it. Loved and, it. and I noticed after about Series 2, you stop, uh, you, your character stopped saying, have you tried turning it off and turning it on again? Yeah. Which was kind of like, it was almost like a catchphrase one. Now, I'm assuming yeah. this was a deliberate... Moved to yeah, it. I think because it was never meant to be a catchphrase. It was meant to be a truism, like, because that was the kind of what he would, that's what IT guys just say all the time. Well, often it works. No, for sure, it's really effective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a frustrating thing about it. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, but then it started becoming a catchphrase and that's not Graves kind of right. And did you get people saying it to you when you're out and about? Did you, was that something you had to deal with? All the time. Yeah. And also, I remember there was a time when my own laptop broke. It wasn't like even a kind of a, a tech thing. I think I, I spilled some yogurt on it, if I'm honest. <laughs> and I brought it to this place on Club High Street where I was living. And the guy who was like a Romanian guy, um, there was a moment where he realized, because he was a fan of the show, uh, that he was going to tell me the thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to have to just agree with him. <laughs> and so he said, have you tried it? <laughs> I said, like, what? You know. <laughs> and we kind of left it at that. <laughs> anyway. You're married now? Yes, indeed. You're married the lovely you. documentary Thank filmmaker. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you married, uh, this is uh, Dawn Porter, now Dawn O. Porter. She That's right. She, okay. uh, she gave me some... Oh... <laughs> Uh, and I believe, when did you get married? When was it? We got married like a year and a half ago, I think. Okay. August, okay. 2000, <laughs> and one of the other numbers. What was the date? You don't remember the date. Okay. It was at the end of August. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it was the 25th of August, yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, that's it's nice. great. Okay. I'm um, very happy. You got... Uh, am I <laughs> Can you do you mind talking about this? How was uh, the proposal a romantic thing for you? Did you do that right? Did you enjoy it? Uh, the proposal... Oh... Oh, kind of. Um, I actually, I proposed in, in, uh, on Guernsey, which is the island where Dawn's from. And uh, I thought what I was doing was incredibly romantic. And I kind of brought her, it's, um, it's a little island, and I, was br I brought her to this kind of sea harbour wall. And there was a big old building beside it, and it looked all beautiful. And I kind of, um, I did the thing, and I got down on one knee, and I did it all. And it was great. And then we went back to her kind of family home and I told her uncle all about it and uh, where we did it, this old building. And he said, oh, you mean by the slaughterhouse? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so I proposed by the slaughterhouse. Well, but she said yes, so that didn't stand she in the way. She did, and it was okay. so fitting. Okay. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, gentlemen. Chris O'Dowd. Don't go away because still to come on the show we've got Kevin Bridges, Emily Mortar, Kiefer Sutherland and the music from John Legend. See you in a couple of minutes.